Good evening, everybody. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Thank you so much. All right, I'm so excited to see you all here tonight. Thank you so much for taking out this time. I know that it's a week before Pesach and we really appreciate you taking this time to be with us. Before I actually jump in and, and dig into what we're gonna do tonight, I just wanted to give a quick note, uh, which is a disclaimer, which is you are going to be seeing a presentation tonight as part of this vision statement. And much of it has pictures of our students please note that many of these pictures are not from this year. Some of them are from this year, but some are not. So when you see pictures of students that do not have masks on, please know that those are not from this year. I just don't want anyone to get nervous. So Pesach is coming. It represents the birth of our nation, the unity of our people. And that unity is both around the common vision as well as a new chapter that lies ahead. And what's interesting about the Pesach story is the idea of our nation galvanizing together without actually fully knowing what tomorrow will bring. Yet, armed with faith and a common vision and values, they laid the foundation for our history and set in motion a Jewish memory that will inform much of our identity today. Tonight, you will hear about our vision for the future of our school, a common vision that will galvanize our, sta our faculty, staff, and community to best prepare our students for the world that lies ahead. And although we don't actually know exactly what the world will look like in the future, we know that with a strong vision of a Burman education, based on our Misora, history, and memory, we will equip our children with the values, identity, and the skills necessary to succeed in an evolving 21st century world. So no, this is not another meeting about COVID. It is not a Shuba B'Shalvan Town Hall. And while I'm incredibly proud of all that we've accomplished during COVID, I'm even more proud of all that we've accomplished and continue to accomplish despite COVID. Because even during the most difficult year, we continue to live and operate by our core values. We're inspiring our students towards a life of Torah and Halakha. We're motivating our students towards academic success at their fullest potential. And we are imbuing our students with a sense of their cheretz and achrayut responsibility for themselves, their community, and the world around them. Berman Hebrew Academy has stood for and delivered upon these values for the past 77 years. And as the world evolves, it is our responsibility to evolve with it and to prepare our students for a future that will certainly look different than the world we know today. You are here tonight to hear about our educational vision, how we will uphold our sacred responsibility as partners in your children's education and how we will ensure that the next 77 years of the Berman Hebrew Academy will be as and even more successful. A vision that celebrates who we are and what we do today and who we aspire to be and what we dream to do as a school moving forward. We're investing time and resources into an educational vision that will develop a common language and approach through all divisions, creating a more seamless and consistent experience for every student as they grow through our program. Our vision will support each child on their journey from preschool to 12th grade graduation and develop, and, and develop them into contributing, con, contributing citizens of an evolving world. Tonight, along with Berman's educational leadership team, we're excited to share some of the major highlights of our exciting vision. Our vision and our plan is robust and courageous. It focuses on various strategic priorities, including nurturing and developing our professional staff and inspiring a culture of excellence throughout the whole school. The plan spans program, people, spaces, and systems. It's certainly more information than we can share with you in one presentation in one night. So we will be sending you more information via email after tonight, as well as offer periodic updates. But for tonight's purposes, we will focus with you on the main components of our program, specifically what we teach and how we teach. In terms of what we teach, we are working on refining, designing, and developing high quality programs that match the academic, religious, spiritual, and social emotional aspirations that we have for our students. We're developing our tefillah curriculum and offerings to help students best develop their relationship with God. Our goal is to help students understand the history and mechanics of tefillah, the structure and language of tefillah, and to also feel inspired and connected to Hashem through the tefillah. We are further developing our Judaic studies programs to help students best connect to Torah, understand the relevance of Torah to the world around us, 
and to apply that Torah to our everyday lives. In short, we want to prepare our students to lead their lives as religiously committed Jews in the modern world. Therefore, we're discussing the addition of programs that, we would, that would build on our current offerings and further teach our students midot and mitzvot in the preschool and lower school. And as they mature into middle and upper school, we're looking beyond the current curriculum of Gemara, Tanakh, and Ivrit, and we're planning to add Hashkafa, Halakha, and Musar to our Judaic program. As modern Orthodox Jews, we are also committed to the land and the state of Israel, its people, history, culture, and language. As such, we are enhancing our curriculum and assessments to ensure fluency and mastery of Ivrit. We are also discussing the addition of an explicit Israel curriculum that will culminate with an Israel advocacy program in the upper school before students graduate out into the world. When it comes to the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and math, we have already begun offering engineering, coding, and AP computer science in middle and upper school, and we are reviewing and revising our math and science curricula throughout the entire school. And moving forward, we're committed to furthering our investments in STEM education. I'm excited to share that we've already engaged with a vendor to design and create makerspaces and an engineering lab and entered into a partnership with Grow Torah, a program that will provide our students with environmental studies through a Torah lens. And furthermore, if you haven't checked your email yet this evening, please do, because I'm thrilled to share that we've hired a director of STEM education and innovation who will oversee the STEM spaces and curriculum and also serve as our school-wide director of educational technology helping to train faculty on best ways to integrate technology into the classrooms that would best meet the unique needs of our students. That announcement was emailed out earlier today and I urge you to read all the way through it. As we prepare our students in this information age and tech revolution, it is also most critical that our students grow as critical readers and writers, skilled in synthesizing literature and information and articulating their own ideas, opinions and convictions. Therefore, we are engaged in writer's workshop to develop strong, consistent standards and rubrics for writing across the curriculum and across all divisions. To best prepare our students to navigate the world around them, we've also made investments in social emotional curriculum and advisory programs throughout the school. And we are developing an executive functioning program in the middle school. These are just some of the major curricular highlights, just some of them. We are reviewing, revising, developing our curriculum in all academic areas, Including the, including the arts and health and fitness. But our, our identity as a school is not only based on the things we teach, but rather on our approach to teaching and learning, the how we teach. Our educational philosophy, backed by years of research in educational psychology, really focuses on how children learn best, how to tap into students' intrinsic motivation, and how to create a student experience where students are fully engaged. Most importantly, it's an approach that helps meet our mission of developing students that are lifelong learners, critical thinkers, equipped to actualize their fullest potential, and poised as future leaders and problem solvers of an evolving world. This educational framework is built on three main pillars, purpose, growth, and autonomy. This framework allows us to create consistent language and approaches to teaching throughout all of our classrooms. This means, although every teacher brings their own personality and flavor into their classroom, the approach to teaching and learning would be similar and familiar to students in every class through every division. I want to dive a little deeper to outline purpose, growth, and autonomy, and then invite our educational principals to share some examples of how each of these pillars would play out at age-appropriate levels at each division. So to begin, purpose. We must help our students understand the purpose behind their learning, the task or the goal. We want to help students see and embrace that they're part of something bigger than themselves. This is an opportunity to shift students from understanding to appreciation. Next, growth. We will work with students to articulate personalized goals for continuous improvement. Together, we'll design pathways with benchmarks and timelines towards those goals and measure and celebrate the progress over time. This is where we help students appreciate the process, not just the end result. This is where we help students understand that excellence comes with the aspiration and the discipline to do and be better than the day before. And lastly, autonomy. We will work to create learning environments where students have the opportunity to utilize 
individual creativity and curiosity to employ their unique talents and skills to express understanding and to explore their personal interests. This is where our students really begin to own their learning and to find and use their own voice. This is where we move students from memorization of content to real application of learning. But let's see what this actually looks like in our classrooms. So I wanna invite Rebecca Gautier, Mora Rebecca Gautieri, our preschool director to start us off. Thank you, Rabbi Dr. Kastan. Good evening. In the preschool, our purpose is to help the children make connections to family, community, Torah, Judaism, and the world around us. We create curriculum and lessons through the lens of early childhood development and preparation for kindergarten. We assess growth through daily observations, through developmental screenings, and through formal learning assessments. We are working toward creating individualized plans for each student to reach their developmental goals. And because of the children's rapid growth at this age, we would also frequently update these individualized plans, making them dynamic and responsive to the involving needs of each child. As far as autonomy, every experience is designed by teachers to provoke students' curiosity, to help the children construct their own understanding and to lead them to share their learning with others. We adjust the lessons based on the students' responses to those experiences. We also teach student-led problem solving and advocacy. So putting this all together, for example, Pesach is coming. The purpose is hopefully obvious as Pesach connects to family and to the Jewish people. Pesach, of course, also connects to Torah, especially for our children in our threes and pre-K classes who learn about the Parsha every week and have already been learning the story of Shemot. So we began our Pesach learning by finding out what the children already knew about Pesach. We asked them questions directly and we put out Pesach related items that provoke the children's discussions and questions. And we keep revisiting what they know as we learn. We had a Seder experience last week. We chose to do that earlier in the learning rather than at the end so we could see what resonated with the children. In a couple of our classes, we noticed that the children took a greater interest in the Seder plate than we might have anticipated. That's because they had a hand in making the haroset, peeling the eggs, and or digging up maror from our preschool garden. They were constructing their own knowledge of what is on the Seder plate. So we're seeing their growth of knowledge and we're also assessing their fine motor development. For example, we're looking to see how this young three-year-old in the photo on the left is holding the knife and if whether or not he's using his helper hand to anchor the apples he's cutting. He'll need those skills for writing later on. Under our social emotional curriculum, we have several tools and strategies to help children solve social dilemmas, either on their own or together. Early in the school year, the Moreau facilitate using these strategies. Over time, we see the children using these tools by themselves, and eventually they can talk through a problem without looking at the visuals. And so you see another example of growing autonomy. And now here is Rachel Hanloff, excuse me, here is Rachel Hanloff, one of the principals of our lower school. Thank you, Rebecca. <clears throat> For purpose in the lower school, we intentionally create a culture where students see themselves as learners and as little people who belong in our school, to our Jewish community and to the world at large. We create lessons with clear connections to our lives, helping students draw context from learning and move from content learning to conceptual learning. For example, in Open Circle, our social emotional learning curriculum, we might discuss the concept of inviting a child to play. The discussion happens in the circle in the classroom, and then it is also implemented at recess time when children find ways to include their peers in play. Another thing that we proactively do to create a feeling of belonging in our school is the Big Berman family. As part of the Big Berman family, students from third to fifth grade serve as bigs to their littles in kindergarten, first and second grades. One of the most beautiful aspects of this program is that students stay paired over their time at Berman. Their relationship builds over the years until bigs graduate to middle school and littles be become bigs to younger students. Our lower school celebrations emphasize and communicate purpose for our children. Why do I need to learn all of the letters of the alphabet? So that when I receive my Sidur, I can read it and speak to Hashem. What is the purpose of learning about geometry and why does pi matter? 
During our Pi Day celebration, our students learn that math applies to everyday life. Math is part of our world and it matters. It is everywhere from measuring pizza to the movement of a clock. I want to invite my co-principal, Susie Israel, to share with you information about growth and autonomy in the lower school. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Rachel. Um, growth is an essential part of our lower school curriculum, and it's also the bedrock of our Jewish faith. As Jews, we are on a journey of learning and growth that begins at birth and continues forever. One way that we foster growth in the lower school is the intentional culture we create where students feel safe to make mistakes and to learn from their mistakes. For example, in several of our classrooms, a teacher regularly asks permission from a student who has made a mistake to share his or her error with their peers. With permission, the teacher puts the mistake on the board and the children work together to identify the error and to learn from it. In one particular classroom, the students together thank the child who shared their mistake by saying, thank you for sharing your mistake. I learned something from it. Another example of this culture is when lower school teachers regularly offer kids an opportunity to retake an assessment and to reflect on what they have learned. This creates a safe space for children, which teaches them that mistakes and targeted effort are a path toward learning. It shows them that learning is a process. Further, we monitor growth over time through formal and informal observations, map and benchmarking assessments, in reading, math, writing, Kriya, and more. We analyze those results to inform our instruction and intervention for each student. These things are already alive in the lower school classrooms. And in line with our new vision, we're beginning to think about and pilot a couple of new initiatives. One initiative is creating student-driven report cards where the students assess themselves, celebrate their progress, and engage in problem solving with their teacher. Additionally, we're beginning to work on goal setting with students. These initiatives will really allow the students to be active participants in their own growth. Of course, growth leads straight to autonomy, where we take students who are active participants in their growth and empower them into their own learning. Over the course of time in the lower school, our intention is to teach students to self-advocate for their academic and social emotional needs and to help them develop strategies that they can employ in a variety of learning experiences. A few of many examples of autonomy in the lower school include presenting multiple strategies to solve a math problem and challenging students to select the one that best speaks to them in terms of solving the problem, or um, when learning a reading comprehension skill like author's purpose or making predictions, students are often offered three different types of articles to read, any of which can teach them that skill. Also, you may have seen choice tactics like homework tic-tac-toe boards, as well as many other avenues of learning through choice. When we are employing growth, purpose, and autonomy properly, it creates a beautiful circle of learning for our children and for our school. Our teachers model this learning by being learners themselves. And in this way, our school becomes a fractal model where everyone in our school is a student and every one of us is also a leader. I want to welcome Melanie Eisen, who's ready to speak about our middle school. Good evening. Thank you, Susie. In the middle school, we are supporting our students as they learn who they are as learners, members of our middle school Kahila, and newest members to the adult Jewish community at large. Part of this process is helping them see themselves in the lessons they learn, the content they absorb, and the activities designed to enrich how they understand the material. I wanna share some examples of things I have seen in the last two weeks. While I will be highlighting a few examples, I need you to know that our teachers work every day to build incredible learning opportunities for your students. Each example highlights a practice that will become a norm as we work together to grow, to grow our curriculum, our practice, and our knowledge in teaching and learning. In terms of purpose, middle school units of study include real world simulations tied to skills and content. We collaboratively design learning experience and opportunities to cross curricular connections. 
In Humash class, the students had the opportunity to compare the leaders in Sefer Shmot to the leaders of the novel Animal Farm. One student chose to compare the character of Squealer to Korach. If you don't know the reference, it's time to pull the Orwell off the shelves. In terms of growth, we help our students develop individualized goals with clear benchmarks and milestones. In Writer's Workshop, our student writers spend time writing and rewriting documents. They work on it independently, with a teacher, and in small conference groups until the piece is ready to be published. The work is never done. We assess students' growth both formally with MAP testing and informally in classroom assessments and analyze the results to inform instruction and interventions for each student. Our teachers meet with Mrs. Atlas on a weekly basis to share strategies and interventions to enrich and support our learners. For autonomy, we design lessons that encourage curiosity and we help students develop strategies that they can employ in a variety of learning experiences and empower them to choose strategically. In math class, students were offered different strategies for solving percentages word problems. The choice of which strategy to employ was up to the students and with their partners. Students are provided with opportunities to experience learning and demonstrate what they have learned. Our students in our eighth grade Toshba classes have been building portfolios. The goal of the portfolios in Toshba is for students to connect their learning in the Masora to themselves and to their communities through projects that, be projects that best represent their learning. It is now my pleasure to pass to my amazing colleague in the upper school, Malka Popper. Thank you, Melanie. Good evening, everyone. When we think about high school, we often focus on our GPA as our grade point average, how well we have scored on assignments and assessments and the numbers on our transcripts. But tonight, we are redefining GPA and thinking about growth, purpose, and autonomy, because it's not just about grades, but how the learning actually takes place and the experiences in and out of the classroom. In the upper school, purpose means that all student experiences are designed to promote relevance, connection, and belonging. How does this happen? Units and lessons are designed with clear goals, essential guiding questions, and enduring understanding. We provide a lens through which to ensure that the ideas last long beyond the unit is over and that the students understand the, and appreciate the why, the main purpose behind the learning. Assessments are designed to measure application, not just memorization. Learning is meaningful and relevant to our personal lives. For example, when learning the topic in Masachet Kiddushin around Talmud Torah, the unit will ask the students to consider why is learning Torah critical to our development as Jewish people and how should it inform our lives? As the study of Gemara, as the students study Gemara, Rishonim, and Achronim, they are able to make the learning deeply personal and meaningful. And as a result, the learning endures long after the unit is over. When we think about growth, we help students develop individualized goals with clear benchmarks and milestones. We offer opportunities for students to learn from their mistake. We seek to measure growth over time. For example, teachers and students will work together to set personal goals in learning. As students work towards achieving their goals, it's inevitable that they'll make mistakes. The teacher will step in at exactly that moment when the mistake was made to help the students feel good about the learning process and mastering a new skill. They will have opportunities to learn from their mistakes and to resubmit work all in the service of actively cultivating a growth mindset. When we think about autonomy, we consider how students have opportunities to artic articulate and share their own perspectives and understandings of the learning and the content. For example, in our engineering class, students spend the first half of the year learning the principles of engineering. They use Arduinos, they learn basic coding, they build circuits. And then in the second half of the year, students are asked to identify problems they experience in the world. They work in small groups with a faculty supervisor to design something that is able to address the very problem that they have identified. Students use the learning, the foundation that they have laid during the first half of the year to make the world a better place in the second half of the year. They do it with passion and excitement because they're able to present something that is a result of their own creativity and their vision. 
Thank you to our entire educational team. As you can see, we are taking the best of what Berman Hebrew Academy has to offer. And we are creating from that consistent norms throughout all of our divisions. We are so excited about the work ahead of us and we hope you are too. An educational vision takes time. However, this does not mean that this is not already happening. As you heard from our principals, there's evidence of this approach already happening in many of our classrooms. And we've already begun to take steps to build this vision with new curricula, programs and offerings, as well as with clear, consistent, exciting culture of teaching and learning so that it, is, it, so that it exists in every single classroom in every division. And beyond the program, as you'll see, hopefully when you read through the vision document that we will send you, we, we look beyond the program and the vision is also facilitated in terms of systems and spaces. We're finding and developing schedules, spaces and systems that will best support and facilitate the success of this vision. We've already transformed and tweaked our schedules in the middle and upper school to maximize learning. We've already transformed our communication systems to enhance the way we partner with you and support you, our Berman families. And we've already begun to renovate many of our learning and community spaces with more very exciting capital improvements coming up in the next few months. So stay tuned on announcements about that. But the most important resource for the success of our entire vision is our people. We're thankful to our dedicated faculty that are passionate about meeting the unique needs of our students. And we're working to retain, develop, and attract highly qualified educational and administrative staff to best deliver on this vision. And I actually want to just give a shout out to our incoming middle school principal who's joining us tonight, Shira Lowenstein, who's already contributed so much to our conversations on this vision. And as we move forward with our vision, we will continue to share updates with you. As I shared earlier, we'll be emailing a copy of our complete vision, and I urge you to take a, a deeper look into our plans. But none of this would be possible without our Berman community. I wanna thank our teachers and administrators for their hard work, resilience, and unparalleled commitment to our students. The enhancements we continue to make to our program are due to the, the dedication they have to their craft and to the children of our community. I wanna thank you, the parents, for your unbelievable support. Your feedback through regular communications and more formal parent surveys has contributed directly to our work and has motivated us to keep working hard to meet the unique needs of our students. I wanna thank the many focus groups who gave of their time during the development of the educational vision for our future. Your insight and input was invaluable and it provided us with the compass to ensure that we are meeting the needs and wants of our community. I wanna thank the community rabbis for their incredible religious and spiritual guidance for our entire community and for their constant input as we continue to work together to develop the future leaders of our global Jewish nation. I wanna thank the board of directors for providing us with the support systems to continue to build on a strong track record of success at Berman well into our future. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and for showing up every day to support our Berman community. Together, all rowing in the same direction with a clear vision for our future in terms of what we teach, in terms of how we teach, I know that we will successfully transmit our core values to our children and prepare them to change the world. I'm confident that with our work and your partnership, we will lay the foundation and set in motion a Jewish memory for our children today that will inform much of their identity in the future. Thank you so much for joining us and I wish you all a Chaka Sheva Sameach.